Over the last six years, we've been fortunate enough to inspect roughly five to 10 properties almost every single week for ourselves and our clients as buyers agents. Now, like anything, there is a process to inspecting investment properties. And in today's video, we're gonna take you through our process and that checklist that you can utilize to get all of the necessary information from the property and the real estate agent in preparation for your negotiating strategy. Now I've hijacked Crystal away from her two young boys this week so she can come in and help. I'm going to interview her today uh, because Crystal is the head buyer's agent at Pumped On Property. Um, she's an absolute gun when it comes to identifying suitable investment properties depending on different strategies and she's probably looked at more properties than anybody that I know combined. Um, so, you know, essentially, Crystal, why don't we go through, let's say we're on realestate.com, we've seen a property that aligns with uh, your strategy, what would be the first thing that you would do? Yeah, awesome. So, find a property that looks interesting, click through the link. Um, first things that we're looking at is number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms and land size, which comes up at the very top of the realestate.com listing. Next thing is scrolling down to the map. For us, things like the street, the location within the suburb, how close it is to various amenities is more important to us than the house itself. So we do a little bit of due diligence, look at the street, um, make sure it's not backing onto shops, making sure it's not backing onto um, schools, train lines, main roads, those sorts of things. Yep. Um, we also use really good assets through council's free websites that you can usually find for yourself on any council mm. journey wide, I'm sure, but the areas that I'm familiar with have things like flood information on them, um, things like planning information on mm. them, um, overlays, that sort of thing. So we also jump into the council's website and then just run that property address through a layer of due diligence just to make sure that not only is the property located on a street that I want to buy, not only is the house itself something that looks interesting to us, but also that it's not flood affected, um, that it doesn't have like a noise overlay on it or something that might impact that property for you in the long term. Yeah, I think that's really important to note that like the house is the last thing that we actually look at, you know. Mm. Location, location, location. There's a reason that was such a popular TV show back in the day. <laughs> it's because the location is what matters. So making sure it's on a nice, quiet, family-friendly street, making sure it's not in a flood zone, making sure that it is in the right pocket of the suburb. Uh, we even go a step further and we check actually who owns the properties in the street, whether it is privately owned or whether it is owned by the government and is public housing because we obviously want to be in those high quality areas where you've got more owner occupiers compared to renters. So let's say that we've done all of that due diligence that we can do online. Um, what is the next step if you're like, okay, cool, this property meets all of our high level requirements, um, time to actually go check it out. Yeah, perfect. So we'll organise an inspection with the real estate agent. I like to go for private viewings where we can, if we can, if the agent's going to allow it. Um, but before booking the inspection, running through some questions with the agent on the phone, like price expectations if it's not online, making sure that the property is in line with your budget, yeah. what you're planning to spend for that property and that you're not wasting your time going to see the home. I think just while we're on that, like I'd love to talk to it because what I've seen recently is real estate agents have no idea what the properties are going to sell for, right? Yeah. Um, for example, we had a property that we were negotiating down in South Brisbane. Uh, Crystal was negotiating this for a client last week and the realestate.com advertisement had offers over $400,000. Now, most people would look at that and be like, oh, awesome, this is a bargain. I can pick this property up. But we did our research. We looked at some car comparable sales and we're like, look, we realistically think this is going to sell in the high fours potentially even up to fives. Um, after going through the process of negotiations, uh, we put in an offer just over $480,000, which we thought was a good offer around market value. Um, then somebody else came in and paid $506,000. So it sold $106,000 above the asking price online. So mm. whatever it says online, don't necessarily take that as gospel. You do have to call the agent and ask those probing questions to see where their expectations are. If they have a CMA, a comparative market analysis of other properties that have sold that are similar and they expect this property to go for a, around that price. Yeah, for sure. So asking them those sorts of questions and why the sellers are selling is obviously going to give you an indication 
before you even get to the property of whether or not it's going to stack up to what you're looking for. Um, and then you make time for the inspection. So make it a time that suits you. Give yourself at least sort of, we, we give ourselves about half an hour, but at least probably half an hour to 45 minutes yeah. to inspect the property thoroughly and sort of spend that time going through the property, which we'll get onto sort of now. Yeah, so what we've done as a business is we've created an app um, that we can fill out at every single property that creates a checklist. And essentially this app looks at absolutely everything that you need to check on the property. Um, so why don't you take us through that checklist a little bit? I think you created it actually. Yeah, so it's been revised a few times over the years <laughs> and questions that we think are important, not so important anymore, but there's about 50 or 60 questions yep. in this app that we like to fill out at the property. We start with the street, then the outside of the house and the inside of the house. So when we first get to the property, before we even meet the agent there, we're looking at things like, um, how does the street feel? Is it a busy road? Um, is there a bus route nearby? Is there a train station nearby? Where is the closest shops? Schools. Um, where's the closest school? So we like to get a gauge of where that street's positioned within the suburb. Um, I like to get to the property about five or 10 minutes before an agent does, just to kind of get a sense of where I'm located, drive around the street, maybe get a feel for how many owner occupiers might be on that street yep. by the maintained yards, whether or not it looks like a street you would want to live on yeah. um, and sort of answer all those questions about the street before we even get to the house. Um, once the agent gets there, then we usually like to answer questions about the house. So what's the condition of the roof and the gutters and things like that, whether or not it looks like it's in relatively good shape, um, how many garages are at the property mm. or car parking spaces, whether there's fully fenced yards and the condition of those fences, what the house is made out of, whether it's brick or yep. weatherboard or um, various different building materials, um, and then what the condition of that is. Just taking photos while you're there mm. as well. Um, obviously, not everyone's going to have reference to the app that we use. So things like having a, one, a piece of paper with you for a one page yeah. snapping photos as you go so that you remember these things when you leave. Because often what we find is you're quite emotionally driven when you're at the property. <laughs> So you want to refer back to these things and be like, did I actually like the home and was it in good condition? Like, is this something that I could see myself owning? Yeah, you've really got to separate yourself from that emo emotion and just be really logical at that open for inspection. And, and for us, you know, we're inspecting five to 10 properties in a day at least. So, you know, then it's really hard to kind of at the end of the day process everything. But if you've taken numerous notes about the property if you've taken specific photos of the property as well it'll just be a trigger so that when you're getting home and you're analyzing or you're comparing one property with another it helps you you know without that emotion emotional attachment just logically process what you've just been through yeah definitely other things that are really important with the outside of the house is obviously the size of the backyard whether it has a backyard yeah. Things that we're always looking for is obviously the bigger the, blo the block, the better. Um, the bigger the backyard, the better when it comes to own occupier appeal and that sort of thing. So if there's a pool, what condition is the pool in? Yeah. Um, these are all things that we find really, really important. Is there side access up the property? Um, is there things like sheds in the backyard? So that if you ever wanted to develop that property at a granny flat, at a pool if it doesn't have one or renovate. what you're dealing with if you want to renovate and extend depending on what your goals are with the purchase you know what you're dealing with in the backyard there as well and what might be going on yeah okay cool so you know it is important and, and it's not like one thing matters more than the other it's just having an understanding of, of the entire property but then obviously we go to the inside of the property and and repeat the same process internally as well yeah definitely so we've got like about 30 or 40 questions that we also fill out for the inside of the property. So things like, does the flow of the house feel like it makes sense? Number of bedrooms, whether or not there's fans, built-in robes, yep. blinds in those bedrooms, um, number of bathrooms and sort of just taking photos of the condition of the bathroom, getting an understanding of, yeah, if there's showers, if there's baths, what yep. the condition of the vanity is. Um, 
number of living spaces and the size of those living spaces. Also, the size of the bedrooms is really important. Um, the flooring, what condition the flooring is in, what it's made out of, whether it's carpet or hardwood or vinyl. Like there's so many things that you're looking at at this point of the inspection. Yeah. Um, dining room, taking photos of that, taking photos of the kitchen, whether or not the range hood is yeah. working. And having this one pager, if you don't have access to the app and just writing down some notes of the things you want yeah. to check or having the app to prompt you, just makes you remember to check those things like the range hood or whether there's air conditioners and whether or not they're working. Hot water just, system. Hot water system, all of these things because you want to make sure that if you're going to purchase this property, what they're what is there that might require maintenance? Yeah. Um, what is there in terms of things that maybe it doesn't have and you maybe need to add fans or put some built-in robes there or if you need to replace the flooring? So these questions really just prompt you about the condition of the home, what you might need to do to improve the home if you're heading down that avenue or what's going to help when it comes to putting that property on the market for rent, what tenants are going to be looking at is important as well. Yeah, and I think whilst all of that information is important, the more info you can have, the easier that it's going to be to make that decision. But as we said earlier, like the house is the least important thing. And the reality when you are buying existing properties and investing for the long term, you're going to have to maintain these properties, you're going to have to renovate them over the longer term. So like the quality of the carpets, you know, the, the quality of, of the paint internally and the, yeah. and the um, window coverings, like these types of things don't matter too much. Like they don't, they're not the most important aspects, but it is important to note because, you know, if you are having to spend a fair bit of money upon settlement to get it ready to rent out, um, you want to have an over, overarching idea of, as to how much money you're going to spend. But the whole intention during this inspection, when we're looking outside, when we're looking inside, we're building our rapport with the, relate, uh, with the agent. The intention is to get as much information as you possibly can so that when you're going into negotiations to secure that property, you're going to put your best foot forward and, and be the person that the sellers actually want to sell that property to. So is there some specific questions that we should be asking? Yeah, so the questions that you ask the agent is probably the most important part of this inspection because like Simon said, you're building that rapport while you're there. You're sort of telling them about you as a buyer as well. So they're understanding where you're coming from, what your plan is with mm. this property. Um, the main things is asking them their plan, which a lot of people forget to ask. They see a property, they like it, they go to put an offer on straight away. <laughs> what we want to know is if the offer's submitted, is it going to be presented to the owner straight away? If an offer's submitted, um, are they going to hold it out until the open home on the weekend if you've booked a private inspection? If it, you're at an open home, a public viewing or something like that, are they presenting offers that same day or are they taking offers and holding them out for a week to try and generate yeah. more interest? Finding out their plan for when they're presenting offers to the owner is actually the most important part because it gives you an idea of like, do I need to go in with my strongest offer straight away? Or are they going to give me another chance at negotiating here? Are the sellers open to negotiating? What's their actual action to mm. take offers to the sellers and how aggressive do I need to be with my offer? Um, and then that brings me into my next point, like what price are the sellers looking yeah. for? It's got nothing to do with the price online, like Simon said. Or in this market, there's often no prices online just yeah. because agents don't really know what the market feedback's going to be. So we're asking things like, what is the market feedback? Have they received other offers? So that can kind of position you about where you need to be with an offer and if it's something you're willing to consider putting an offer on. Now in Queensland, real estate agents don't legally have to tell you any of that information anyway. So it might be like talking to a brick wall in some of those instances. But once again, you just don't get emotionally attached to it. Like that's a professional salesperson that you're talking to. They're trying to get the best possible result for the seller. So they're going to try and hold their cards as close to their heart as they possibly can. And it's going to change. Every single agent is different. Every single suburb is different. So you really need to have done your research before you even start looking at realestate.com. You need to make sure you understand where market value lies for spe specific opportunities. And you know to understand the agents, that just takes experience, it takes time. Crystal's been negotiating with these agents for over six years up here in Brisbane now. Um, she's bought multiple properties off most of the top performing agents in the best areas of Brisbane. So you get to feel that out. But if you're asking the right questions, you will get the right information and you'll be position, positioning yourself as a serious buyer and somebody that could potentially secure that property. 
Exactly right. And often it's about asking these questions multiple times. So when you're calling to book that inspection, asking a few of these probing questions mm. in the beginning, when you're at the inspection, asking them again. Um, and then when you're planning on placing an offer, just reconfirming what their plan is, what that price feedback is once again. And in addition to that, terms and conditions. So why are the sellers selling and what's actually going to motivate mm. them? So a lot of the time we're winning out offers at the moment, being investors, we're buying properties off people who haven't found another place to live. So mm. things like a rent back clause mm. for the owners, um, things like longer settlements to give them time to move out of the property. In some instances, there might have been some sort of family crisis occur, so they actually want a really short settlement, um, whether or not they're going to be willing to take longer finance clauses, shorter finance clauses, all of these things are really important because it's not just the price that comes into consideration. In such a hot market, agents are often fielding offers from 10 or so buyers. Yeah. So for them, it's about how that whole offer presents itself. And if you can ask them questions about why is that owner selling and what's going to actually motivate them to take your offer, that's actually the most important part. Those terms are really, really imperative to having your offer get over the line. Love that. Well, thank you so much for taking us through that process of inspecting and negotiating with a real estate agent for a property. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that it, it's just a process like everything else. And, and with the right experience and with the right support, you can certainly get amazing results like Crystal has been able to do for so many of our clients. Now, if you're sitting there thinking that you are wanting to purchase an investment property in Brisbane, uh, we do run a buyer's agency where we help a very small number of people invest in the Brisbane market every single month. Now, what we'd love to offer you is a free one-on-one -on -one strategy session. You can book that in by heading over to our website, www.pumpedonproperty.com and following the links to book in your free strategy session where we'll talk about exactly where you're at right now. We'll talk about where you're wanting to be in the future and your property investment goals. On top of that though, we'll talk about the current market conditions. We'll talk about the types of properties that might be available out there at the moment. And then you can go out there and absolutely smash it yourself. Or if you're wanting that support and if you're wanting Crystal to help you out with that buying process and the rest of the team, then you may be able to become one of the small number of clients that we work with each month. Uh, either way, I think you should re-watch this video if you're thinking about purchasing a property anytime soon because it will help you understand how that process works and it will help you get better results. So get, get out there and invest safely. Woo! That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Get Have a spin. Cool, yeah. Oh, sweaty. So sweaty. <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.